If you've ever wanted to know what I look like with Elon Musk's face, or if Obama had Joe Biden's face, well, you've come to the right place. Cause in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use face fusion, which allows you to face swap any two pictures together and seemingly in real time. I'm gonna show you how to install it and what settings you should be using so you can get the best results. So enough talk, let's get on to the video. So we're gonna be using face fusion by face fusion over on GitHub. I'll have a link down in the description below to where you can and get this GitHub repository. If we scroll down, we can see the UI layout here. It's really simple, really intuitive. And then there's also a little installation guide down here. And then if we want to run it in a command terminal, we can also do it through here. But what we're gonna do in this case is follow the installation guide here on the GitHub. And this will take us to the documentation. What's nice about Face Fusion is it's all ran locally. So you can use this as many times as you want. Also, it's really fast and really efficient. I have a 3080 and I've had no issues with it. They have some great documentation here that you can follow for Linux, Mac OS, and Windows. I'm on Windows, so I'll be following this one, but it's very similar with Mac OS as well as Linux. First, we have to make sure we have Python at least 3.10.6. That's like the recommended version of Python for all things AI right now. You can just head on over to the Python website and install that like any other program. All you do for that is literally just come on over to the Python website and install it down here. And then we're also gonna wanna make sure we have pip installed on our system. What I like to do is use VS Code and we can come and make a new terminal up here and we can just paste in our command to make sure we have it. You can see I already have my requirement satisfied if I move my camera real quick. Also, if you are gonna be using VS Code, a good thing to mention is you do want to have Python installed on your VS Code. And then we're also going to need Git for this example. Now, I don't think you have to have it installed. You could probably just come up here to the top here and then download it from here. Um, but having Git installed will just make things a lot easier. Basically allows us to pull repositories from GitHub. If you're not familiar with it, there's a ton of videos on YouTube that explain how to do this. And you're also going to need FFmpeg. FFmpeg is kind of like a media library for Python that allows us to manipulate images and video. If we head on over to the FFmpeg website here, we can literally just click on the download button here and get the latest version. And you can literally just download it like any other program. If you can't get FFmpeg to work for some reason, there's a bunch of tutorials out there showing you more on how you can do this. But once you have those four requirements, um, I've honestly skipped the tool set down here. We'll just move on to the rest of the installation. So we'll come copy this git clone command right here. I'll head on to our VS code terminal. I'll make a new terminal and then I'll just paste our git command right in the terminal here. And this will give us our face fusion folder with everything we need. Perfect. Now we just have to follow a couple more commands here. So we want to CD into face fusion. So this will basically just put us in that folder we just made. Then it tells us to set up our environment, which if we haven't done already, we just gotta make sure we're using Python 3.10 at least. I'm not gonna do this in my case, but if you wanna have your own environment set up, if you do use different versions of Python, this is what you would do. But for people like me, I'm gonna skip this and just run it normally. We also have to have the Python dependencies that are part of this program. So we'll just copy this command here. And then now that we're in the folder face fusion, we'll just paste it and then we'll install everything it tells us to install. We'll select a variant of torch. I'll just go with the default one. And then same thing for the on X runtime. I'll also go with the default and we'll just continue with that. And it should take around a couple minutes to finish downloading everything. It took about like a minute here now that we're done. And then we'll also have to start up our accelerator with CUDA. I didn't really poke around with this too much, but as long as you have an Nvidia graphics card, you should be good. If there is complications that that come up, you can always download the CUDA version. Like I know Torch, for instance, they have different versions of CUDA right here that you can pick from. So just make sure you have the right one selected. If there's any issues whatsoever at any point in this process, you know the drill by now, just copy the error and put it into ChatGPT and then see what it gives you. And then try maybe doing some Googling from there to figure out what the real problem is. And then from there, we'll finish off with our Python run command. And I'll hop back over to VS Code, paste that bad boy in. And this one from my previous experience, it did take a little bit to run, so I'll see you guys in a second. If you guys are getting any value out of this video so far whatsoever, make sure to slap a fat like on this video. It really, really does help out the channel. Thank you guys so much for sticking around. I just cracked 600 subscribers, which like isn't anything crazy, but like it's an upward mission from here, guys. And after about like two or three minutes, we finally have it running on a local URL and it gives us a URL here and I'll just control click on that. And now we're brought to our face fusion 
Gen UI. And all we have to do is just click on our source. I'll open my folder of some images here that we'll play around with. So to start, what I'll do is I'll use Jeff Bezos and then I'll pick a new image and then I'll use Sam Bankman Freed. And then it just immediately already up here makes the image for us. All right, honestly, I just kind of did this one off the cuff, but they look pretty similar. So let's try a different one here, like Post Malone. Oh my God, I got rid of his tattoos. Bit off topic, but I hate this picture of Sam, bro. He just looks like a predator in this one. I mean, he kind of is. So I have this picture of Kevin O'Leary. <laughs> it vaguely looks like him. We'll do this picture of Kevin James' meme photo. Okay, you can kind of tell a little bit. Let's try Elon Musk. All right, that one looks a bit more, a bit more unique there. Put in different source pictures and different target pictures here. This one is the main photo and this is the face that we're using that's gonna be on this photo if you haven't figured it out already. And then we can come down here and we can play with some of the sliders to get our generation looking a little bit better. So we have our face reference face distance here, which I'm pretty sure just affects the tracking of the face. And then we also have the face mask blur, which is the crop around the face. So if we turn this all the way up, you'll see I'm mean, you can't really tell, like you can kind of see some overlap here in the teeth. But if we turn it all the way down, you can like kind of see like the edges, like his hair up here. It's really straight. It's really just putting the face on top of Elon Musk's face here. So we wanna set that to something like three, just so it kind of blends in on the sides there. And then there's also direction specific padding. If we were to take it all the way to 100, it'd be gone. But if we did something like 17, maybe even a little less. Okay, and then we did maybe something a little bit from the left. Okay, yeah, maybe from the right. Interesting. Okay, so it maybe looks a little bit better. I'm not too sure. But you can play around with it and adjust it for your specific picture. And then there's also some options about the face detection. Um, So you can pick which one if you have different faces in your image. Let's say you have like a crowd, you can kind of have it detect which is the right one in here. Also, they have a age analyzer, which is kind of interesting. I haven't really got too much different results by using this. And there's also a gender analyzer. Once again, I don't really mess around with that, the purposes of this video. And then there's also different detection models. The retina face model has honestly been perfect. Like I haven't had any issues with it so far. So we'll just keep it on. And then as well as the face detector size, this is basically the area of how much it uses to detect the face. 640 is more than enough. If you have like a super large image, then maybe you'd wanna go with something higher. That's only if it's not picking up where the face is at. And then same thing down here, it just is like a prediction score. So depending on how confident the AI generation is in determining what the face is, this will basically be like the stopping point of whether it says, yes, this is a face or no, it's not the face. But for the most part, leaving it on 0.5 has given me pretty decent results. So yeah, we'll, we'll do some more playing around with it here. I'm, I'm having a lot of fun with it. It's really fun because you can just drop in pictures. Like I have this picture of Big Dick Barry here. <laughs> oh my God, I love this. This is so funny. We did Sam Bakeman Freed. I hate that. I hate that. Let's try like Doja Cat. Oh my God, no. Please no. What if we did Taylor Swift? I think I have a picture of Taylor Swift in here. This is weird. I don't know if I like this. Try like George Washington on Doja Cat. <laughs> Slay. <laughs> All right, let's 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 try a different person. Let's try Kodak Black. I thought Kodak Black would be pretty funny for this one. Uh, oh no, let's try it down here actually. Let's try like Elon Musk on Kodak Black. Oh my God. <laughs> yes. Oh my God, that's too funny. Let's try a different one. Let's try, let's try me if I was Kodak Black. I hate this. The generations usually pop up down here, but if for some reason it's not working, you can always come down here and click on start and it'll also generate another generation down here. But what I do want to show you is if for some reason you're not getting that good of results, I had this picture of Elon Musk and then we'll use this original photo of me and you can see it is really pixelated. I was really upset by this one because I thought it was kind of funny. It did a good job of putting Elon's face on my face, but it doesn't look that good. The quality is not that good. So what they have here are a couple different frame processors we can choose from. And the one that we're gonna be using is the frame enhancer. It's gonna take a little time here. If we go back into VS Code, you can see it's installing this here. And there we go, we have our new image here. And I don't know if you can tell in the video, but it is a lot cleaner. The eyes specifically are a lot more fleshed out. It looks like it was upscaled and then just put on my face. And honestly, I can't tell if that's me or Elon Musk. We'll try some of these other ones. So there's also 
also a face debugger. Okay, so it looks like it's a tracker here. So we'll, maybe we'll turn that off. Let's try the frame enhancer. Okay, I think I did marginal improvements. We take it off and try it again. Let's see. Yeah, that was kind of like a marginal improvement. If there is any issues, you can always try flicking it on and off and see what happens. But the face underscore enhancer is really what's been doing it for me if you ever get any poor quality images. There's also a couple different face swapper models and enhancers out there. The ones that already comes pre-installed with are really nice. If you want to use any of the other ones that give you options to pick, I'm pretty sure if you just click on one, it'll install it like it does for all the other models. This right here is really all you need to do some pretty good face swapping. So let's give it a couple more runs and see what we can come up with. I'm gonna try Obama, me as Obama. I hate this, I hate this. Joe Obama, it's like a yo mama joke. <laughs> Joe Obama. <laughs> what if we did Kodak Black? Kodak Black as Joe Biden. Oh my God, bro. What? <laughs> yeah. We'll start with uh, my man's here. It's a little laggy on my end. It's definitely using up some some resources here. Vladimir Putin. No. <laughs> no. Oh my God, dude. No. This will be interesting. Kind of iffy. I don't know if I care for that one. It's not not too great. Try Elon Musk. Doesn't really change it all that much. Like Taylor Swift. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that one did something. His tattoos are not that good though. Definitely see where the face got put on. Did not keep the beard. Oh man, looking cute. Obama and Putin. Interesting. This is an interesting combination here. I didn't I didn't know what I what to expect and I don't know if I like it either. Maybe try George Washington. I don't know. I don't really didn't do too much. There's not a lot of detail in this picture. That's the thing too, is you really have to stick to just people. I tried using like other things and if it's like a low quality meme, any kind of art like this, it really doesn't work. You really have to stick with people. It's just because of the face detection and the way it swaps is, is trained on people. So it makes sense that that's what you should be using. Kodak Black Elon. Looks like me, bro. That is scary. I am the president of the United States. This is my presidential photo. Ew. I don't know. I don't like this. This is a point that I want to make out, but it does do cross racial photos really well. I didn't know if it would be like a, like you could tell where the lines are, but it changes the skin tone to match really nicely. Although this is a terrifying picture. Like it darkens my face to match the skin tone of his body, which I think is, is incredible. This is where the technology is like a year after AI has really been like a thing. I only imagine where it's going to be in 10 years and this will just be a cakewalk, but this is the state of where things are at right now. Right now. But once you're done generating some images with face fusion, you can turn them into some deep fake memes. You can check out this video here where I walk you through how to make deep fake videos where you can make any video or image say whatever you want. The quality looks really good. So I'll see you guys over there.